Turkey is working on several big projects to harness the power of water. We'll focus on two major ones. First, we'll discuss a mega hydroelectric dam being built on the Choru River in the Artvin province near the Black Sea. Then we'll explore how Turkey is constructing the world's largest suspension bridge. Before getting into the details of these projects, please make sure to like, share and subscribe to our channel for more amazing videos. Historically, humans have built structures to block water flow, mainly for farming. But today's dams, like the one at Yusufeli, are engineering wonders. They're made with massive concrete walls, equipped with sluices or sliding gates spanning across rivers. The height of a dam is crucial because it determines how much water it can store. The Yusufeli Dam, standing at 270 meters tall, will be the tallest in Turkey and rank as the seventh tallest in the world. It's a concrete arch-type dam, and its construction began on December 21, 2012. The Yusufeli Dam is a key part of a bigger project on the Choru River, where the plan is to build 13 dams. So far, two are operational and two are under construction, including Yusufeli, which will be the second largest among them. The dam's main goal is to generate hydroelectric power, supporting a power plant with a capacity of 540 megawatts. Despite its benefits, the dam has sparked controversy due to its potential effects on local wildlife and the need to relocate people living nearby. The hydroelectric plant at the dam is expected to produce 1.9 billion kilowatt hours of electricity, enough to supply around 650,000 people. Located in the northeastern part of Turkey's Artvin province, the Yusufeli Dam will contribute over $221 million to the economy every year and is a testament to Turkish engineering having been constructed entirely by local engineers. Situated 70 kilometers southwest of Artvin, the dam will be a double curved arch structure. It will stand 270 meters tall from its base and 223 meters from the river's lowest point. With a crest length of 490 meters and a width of 15 meters, it's made of 4 million cubic meters of concrete, enough to build 50,000 houses. The top of the dam will be 715 meters above sea level. The reservoir will normally be at 710 meters, but it can reach up to 712 meters and go as low as 670 meters. The reservoir will cover an area of 33 square kilometers and hold up to 2 billion cubic meters of water. Out of this, 1 billion cubic meters will be actively used for storage. The dam's spillway is designed to handle up to 8,000 cubic meters of water. Below ground, there's a power plant that's 110 meters long, about 21.4 meters wide and around 45.2 meters tall. This plant houses three Francis turbines, each capable of producing 110 megawatts of power. In this project, up to 6,500 cubic meters of concrete is used daily across three construction sites. The process of water storage and power generation is set to begin soon, with final checks on the dam already in progress. To manage the huge pieces of construction equipment, a special cable crane system has been set up across the site. This system allows heavy machinery to be moved through the air from one side of the site to the other. When the Yusufeli Dam starts operating at full capacity, it will generate 560 billion kilowatt hours of electricity each year, with an installed capacity of 1.9 gigawatts. This amount of power is enough to satisfy the yearly energy needs of a major city like Antalya. With Yusufeli Dam's activation, Turkey's capacity to generate electricity from hydroelectric sources will go up by 2%. This dam stands as a testament to Turkish engineering prowess, symbolizing the nation's ability to undertake and complete monumental projects. In addition to the dam itself, the project includes the construction of 110 kilometers of roads, along with 45 tunnels, 22 bridges and 92 culverts. The project is expected to contribute $83.5 million to the country's economy every year and is projected to pay for itself within seven years. The Dardanelles Strait has always been a strategic location for Turkey. 
It stretches 120 kilometers in length and narrows down to just 4 kilometers at its slimmest point. This strait is vital as it links the Black Sea to the Mediterranean Sea, providing a crucial passage for countries rich in resources to access global markets. Along with the nearby Bosphorus Strait, the Dardanelles marks the boundary between Europe and Asia. Despite its significance, until 2022, there were only three bridges and two tunnels connecting the two continents, all located in Istanbul. This limited number of crossings led to significant traffic congestion both on water and on land. The Turkish government first considered building a bridge over the Dardanelles in 1988 to alleviate these issues. However, the project was put on hold in 1995 due to various political and economic challenges. Over two decades after initial efforts stalled, the Turkish government revived a bridge project in 2016. By the following year, a Turkish consortium and two South Korean firms won the contract to build the bridge. Construction kicked off in September 2017, starting with sinking a couple of caissons 40 meters deep into the sea, each weighing 59,000 tons. These caissons were reinforced with steel frames and topped with special platforms to withstand earthquakes. On these foundations, towers soaring 318 meters high were erected for the Chinakale 1915 bridge. This bridge, with its central span of 2,023 meters, aims to set a record as the suspension bridge with the longest main span globally. Its total length reaches 4,608 meters. The bridge's cables are massive, with each containing 126 strands, contributing to the main support system. In total, around 162,000 kilometers, or about 100,000 miles, of wire and 296 cables, each 4,330 meters long, were used. The total wire length in the steel cables is 40,000 kilometers, or about 25,000 miles which is enough to circle the Earth four times. The Chinakale 1915 bridge itself is remarkable for its length, with a span of 2,023 meters between its two towers. It features six lanes in total, three in each direction, making it the longest of its kind in the world. The bridge significantly cuts down the travel time between the two sides from an hour and a half by ferry to just six minutes by car. The foundations of the bridge extend 333 meters on each side, and its towers reach a height of 318 meters, surpassing the Eiffel Tower's 300 meters. The bridge is designed to provide considerable economic benefits, with estimated annual savings of $85 million. The clearance below the bridge is around 70 meters, which accommodates the passage of large sea vessels. The bridge's location presents challenges like strong winds, high seismic activity, and the need to accommodate large container and cruise ships. To ensure the bridge's stability against wind, a double-hull beam design was chosen. The bridge's design also considers the possibility of ship collisions. The bridge's foundations are set way underwater, at 45 meters deep on the Asian side and 37 meters deep on the European side. Remarkably, this massive construction project was completed in just four years, with a total cost of $2.79 billion. The Chinakale 1915 bridge, connecting the European and Asian sides of the Dardanelles for the first time, involved 5,100 workers and 740 pieces of construction equipment. Economically, the bridge is a huge boost for Turkey, expected to save $454 million annually in fuel and emissions. Experts predict the bridge will have a substantial positive impact on Turkey's economy, potentially generating around $6 billion per year, creating 118,000 jobs and increasing the GDP by $2.6 billion. Strategically, the Chinakale 1915 bridge provides a vital shortcut from Istanbul to the southeastern regions, boosting international tourism, speeding up goods delivery, and improving transport between Asia and Europe. This eliminates the need for trucks, tourist buses, and cars to wait for ferries across the Dardanelles, streamlining the journey between the continents. 
There are opinions that Turkey's new projects could have significant impacts, not just locally, but on a global scale, influencing water resources and energy distribution. Could this lead to tensions? Or is it a step towards Turkey's self-reliance and sustainable development? What do you think? And have you seen our detailed video on the Çanakkale Bridge? There are some other shocking details about this project that you should definitely check out. Remember to like, share and subscribe for more fascinating updates. Thanks for tuning in. Catch you in the next video.